Testing, are we on? Like that? Can you hear me now? All right. What's going on over here? They're going to miss out. They're going to miss out tonight. Okay, hello everybody. Welcome YouTubers. <clears throat> Welcome all you guys. Uh, men and women of God, we thank you all for coming tonight. Uh, my name is Pete Stevens. I got a few announcements, and then I'm, we got some some really cool testimonies here tonight. We have three of them. They're going to get up here and and lay it down. Do not be worried. This is not um, going to be a night of testimonies. This is a God has given us a powerful word: how to overcome fear in these end days. <clears throat> Bear with me. My voice is a little stretched. I've been yelling at demons, but um, they're going to be leaving tonight. Um, so anyways, we got the Zoom call. Uh, it's on Wednesday at 6 o'clock, man. Jump on that thing. That thing is rocking right now. We had 100, 100 people on there on Wednesday, and it was just powerful. We've been getting a lot of testimonies. People are getting healed. A lot of people getting delivered and set free, overcoming. It's just amazing. And uh, there's another one on Tuesday night. It's called Tuesday Night Thunder. And that's with, uh, that's with Steve Binion, Peter Venezuela, and Mike. So check that out, too. That's, that thing's rocking, too. So if you can, just go, go hard, go strong. Hit Tuesday and Wednesday. And then come here on Thursday and Friday. And then speaking of Saturday, Mike's training is the fourth Saturday of every month. I'm in the small sanctuary at 12 o'clock, and we have children deliverance this Saturday, November 5th, small sanctuary, 10 a.m., and Julie's uh, women's seminar is Saturday, November 19th at noon, okay? And I think I've, oh yeah, and then we got Bro Mike's Sunday podcast, The Deep Things of God, that's at 9 a.m., um, I believe that's on Facebook. Facebook, right? Facebook and Twitch. Thank you. I'm going to leave this here for you, bro. Thank you. Um, I'm just going to pray real quick, and then I'm going to have uh, Laura come up, and she's got a powerful testimony. She got touched by the Lord. And that's what's going to happen here tonight, because we're all here for one reason, and that's we want to be changed. We want to serve God with our whole hearts. We want to move in power so we can bring our relatives, our friends, our neighbors into the kingdom of God. So I'm just going to pray that the Holy Ghost comes and forever changes all of us. Why don't you guys pray with me, okay? So Father God, I thank you, Lord, for the testimonies of the lives that you changed, Lord. You, you sent your son into the world for us, Lord, that we could find a way out and rise up. And you would come tabernacle inside us. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for doing a powerful work in these men and women of God. And Lord, we ask that you touch everybody on the YouTube channel tonight. You touch everybody in this sanctuary. That we all leave here tonight forever changed. And we already know you're going to do it because you're a good God. We've all shown up here for that very reason. And we just say thank you, Lord. Thank you for what you're going to do tonight. We rely on you, Lord. We trust in you. We put all our hope, all our trust in the risen Son of God, and we thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, we got Laura up here. Okay, I'm not good at public speaking, so I'm going to tell you that right now. <laughs> You'll do great, yeah. Laura. Hi, can you hear me? Okay. My name's Laura. I'm 62 years old. Um, I, up until I was like 22... I was an athlete in school, rode horses, worked three jobs. Everything was awesome. Then I met my husband, God rest his soul, and I had demons go into me. I got into drugs. Um, I got next to a heroin addict. That was fun. Um, I was homeless. Uh, I lost everything. Everything was stolen from me. I came back to Arizona, and my husband was very sick. So... I started taking care of him. And slowly the demons started taking me over. And over and over and over. So when I got to come here to see Brother Mike, I'm sincere. I could not walk. I was hunched over like this. 
I couldn't talk. She had to like carry me in. And when I got done, I was like freaking rocking. My hands were all over my head. I was running down the aisle, right? Hallelujah. And I went from 100, I was a bodybuilder when I was in my 20s. I was 232 pounds. Um, when I started, when we came here, demons were getting into me, I got down to 150 pounds. Then I got down to 119 pounds. And I'm six foot tall. That was pretty good. <coughs> but now I'm up to 127. And I can see clearly, and I can speak articulately. So no, mom, co college was not a mistake. Um, so anyway, I just want to tell you guys that the blessings of the Lord are real. You can turn the heat off and, and they turn will the change your life. I mean, every being, everything in my whole heart and being is all new, all new. And I'm, and I'm grateful for all of it. So you guys, I just thank you, Lord, for changing my life. And I give my life and my heart and my soul to you for the rest of my life. Amen. Oh, thank you. And thank you to Michelle for helping me see the right way. And Lisa, if you're watching, get down here. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Bless you. Isn't God wonderful? He's so good to us. Um, okay, Daniel, you're up, bro. This is my brother Daniel. I've watched him grow overcome drug addiction, and just rise up. Now he's on the ministry team. He helps us. He's a powerful man of God. God's done a tremendous work in his life. There you go, Thanks. <laughs> yeah, so my name's uh, Daniel. Um, I grew up in the church. I grew up in a Romanian Pentecostal church. So I grew up, and I had a lot of knowledge about God. I had a lot of knowledge about the Bible, but I never encountered God. I never had that born-again experience. So I wrote this verse down, and when he has come, he's speaking about the Holy Spirit, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. So I began, you know, drinking in high school. I began popping pills uh, not too long after. Um, my drinking got out of control when I left the house. I rebelled against my parents. Um, these spirits... Uh, we saw, we were able to see that they skipped a generation. So my grandfather on one side of my family was uh, an alcoholic. So my parents, they never touched alcohol. They never touched cigarettes. I've never heard them curse in my life. But somehow that spirit skipped a generation. So in high school, when I had my first sip of alcohol, it just almost like immediately went downhill. Especially when I left the house, I joined the, the military. I went into the Navy. Um, I just try to run as far as I can away from the house, away from, away from any structure. Um, I just wanted to do my own thing. So I, I did exactly that. I joined the Navy. I began, um, you know, drinking literally every single day I got out. And I tried to stay sober. I, I stayed sober for about a year. I was hiding my alcohol, though. Every time I could get away, yeah, I got married. So my wife was a God-fearing woman, so you can imagine what that's like, me, you know, hiding all my sins and, you know, trying to be good. And so I was trying my best, and I was hiding my alcohol addiction. Uh, every time I could get away, I would drink. And after about a year, um, I just picked it up. We moved back to, so my wife is from Romania. We moved back here when we got her visa paperwork and all that. We moved back here, and I slowly started picking it up, working here. I was, um, I began drinking just about every day, even worse than it was in the Navy, um, because now I was doing, you know, a lot of pills. And when the gym shut down and everything shut down uh, during COVID, that's when the devil took the opportunity to take my mind, and I was introduced to methamphetamine. So very quickly, I dropped probably like 30 pounds, 40 pounds within a couple months, and my mind was just gone. It's all I could think about day and night. I was sneaking it in the house. I, nobody in my family knew what was going on. They knew something was off with me. And I do remember we had a family function, and uh, our extended family, we don't get together too often. But we got together for a special occasion. I just remember I walked in. I was like the last one to walk in there. 
And I remember it was like the life got sucked out of the room. Like everybody looked at me and was just like, what is going on? And, you know, um, those demons manifested. I, I got triggered. I got angry at them for judging me for this and that, you know. But uh, sooner or later, my, my parents knew it was spiritual. My parents knew about deliverance, but they didn't know anybody that practiced deliverance. So my mom on Facebook just saw Brother Mike's random comment on somebody's Facebook and was like, oh, that, that guy seems like he knows what he's talking about. And so he, she looked into him and she was like, hey, I think this guy can help my son. Let me reach out to him. So she did and um, she asked me, she was like, hey, do you want to go in for a counseling session? And you know, I was just like, yeah, whatever, because I've been to church, I had the knowledge and I, I've been... <laughs> I've seen preachers, I've, seen, I've talked to pastors, I've had confession, and they would pray over me, and nothing would happen. So I was like, yeah, whatever, I'll go in there for a counseling session, I'll get you guys off my back, and then I could go back to doing what I was doing. So the day before, or the day I was scheduled to come in, for some reason I had a, a thought in the back of my mind, I was like, they wouldn't call it the Arizona Deliverance Center for any reason, like, <laughs> you know. So I just, ha I just had a thought, something, something's strange about this place. I think Brother Mike actually called me two weeks prior, or Brother Rick, I'm not sure who. And I just remember the tone of their voice and the, the way they were speaking on the phone. I was thinking, like, these people sound pretty serious. <laughs> so, yeah, the day I was scheduled to come in here, um, those demons manifest. I think they knew something was going to happen. I tried to, you know, to sleep my way through the appointment. I told my wife. I, I actually drove down here. I forced myself in the truck to drive down here. I just was like, man up, just go down there, you know, shut everybody up. Came down here. I called my wife. I was like, hey, don't come. I was trying to find any excuse to get out of my appointment. It's like, don't come down here. It's a bad neighborhood. Uh, there's, you know, it's bad traffic. Just don't come down. She was like, no, I'm coming down there. And so I was like, all right, like, cool. Like, I just lost my last opportunity to try to get out of this situation. So I remember I opened the truck door. And it's like something held me in the truck. And I was just like, wow, that's weird. I ripped myself out and I just ran across the street over here. I was just thinking, okay, this is weird. I walk in through the front door and I see Brother Rick. And I'm like, I, was, I thought I was supposed to meet a preacher, you know, like you're a pastor. <laughs> Seeing Brother Rick, he's, you know, this big former football player, you know, he got a demeanor about him, and um, I just looked at him. I was like, okay, this is even weirder than, you know, I expected. And I come in, and the Holy Spirit begins to speak through Brother Rick, and my mouth just dropped. As soon as, like, he started speaking, and I remember looking around the room. I was like, what is this place? Like, this is crazy. Like, what? Like, the Holy Spirit was speaking through him so strong. I was just staring at I was, like, baffled at what he was saying. Tell me, and, like, literally spot on, he was reading my mail. And so that's the day um, I came in contact for the first time. I met the Holy Spirit, and he convicted me hard. He convicted me. 2 Corinthians 7.10 said, for, uh, says, godly sorrow leads to repentance. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what happened. I had godly sorrow that just washed over me. I began to bawl like a baby in that room with uh, Brother Rick, and he began to cast demons out. And those demons flew out. I... I lifted my head up after so long. My wife was outside in the lobby waiting for me. And I came out. Uh, well, in the meantime, Brother Rick uh, went out to talk to my wife, and he's like, yeah, he, he got a touch from God. And my wife's like, no, I'm not, I, I don't believe it. I have to see it from my own eyes. Mm -hmm. And I come out of that room, and I was smiling <coughs> from ear to ear. <laughs> Hallelujah. I, I had a touch from God. <coughs> I came out, I remember Rick gave me a smile, and he just goes, you're a man of God. And so I walk out of there. About a, a few days later, I relapse, and that's when I really met God. I relapsed, and it was like a blink of an eye, I woke up. And I remember looking in the corner of my room, and a fear just came over me, a blackness. Uh, it was like a vacuum that was sucking me out, and it was a desperation. I was trying to do anything I could to get out of whatever this was that was sucking me in, and I couldn't. And that's when I, the first time I heard the voice of the Lord, and he told me that the path you are on is going to lead to an eternity of suffering. And within a split second, I might have had like, like half a second of this desperation that came over me. 
And then all of a sudden, a peace came over me, and I knew it was the embrace of Jesus Christ. And I just began to weep. In the mid- it was in the middle of the night. My wife was asleep next to me. She had no idea what was going on. I was just weeping, and praise just started coming straight up out of my spirit, man. Like, I've been in church my entire life, and I've never had praise come out. I was just worshiping God, King of kings, Lord of lords. And I remember I said, Abba, Father, and like a fire just from my head to my toe was just filling me up. And every time my tears would flow stronger and stronger and more praise, it was incredible. And I had a revelation. It was like it was me tickling God with the words that were coming out of my mouth. It was like all heaven was erupting in praise. And it was just the most incredible thing that's ever happened to me. I remember my wife, she went to work that next day, and I spent probably like three or four days just straight up in the word of God. I was listening to teaching. I couldn't believe what was going on. I was reading the word of God like never before. My wife would come home from work, and I was like, did, like, did you know this? Did you know this? And she's like, yeah, yeah, like I know that. I'm like, no, but this is real. <laughs> like, it was just incredible. And she, was, she would come home from work, and I would preach to her. She's, we've been married for four years. I've never talked to her about God. Even though we're going to church every Sunday, we never taught spiritual things. I never opened my mouth about God to her. And she would come home, and I would spend two or three hours at a time preaching to her, telling her all these revelations. It all clicked. The scripture clicked for me. It all made sense, and it was because of deliverance. It was because I had those demons that came out. And, you know, you have your first touch from God and your first set of deliverance. But that's not it. You have to keep going. You have to, this devil's going to come and try to take it. And that's exactly what he did. It was like picking a hornet's nest for me. So when I relapsed, and, but when I had the Holy Spirit, I was able to go a little bit more each and every time. And I think it was about March or April last year. So it's been over a year and a half, and I've been completely sober. I haven't touched alcohol. I haven't touched pills. I haven't touched anything. And it's all because of deliverance, and I give God all the praise and glory. That's great, man. Hey, God's amazing, man. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Um, Donald, do you want to come up? You're next, bro. Um, man, God's amazing. That's right. Yeah. Hey, man. Hello, brothers and sisters. Hi. <clears throat> Uh, Howdy. Uh, I got to ask for Brother Pete to come up and give my testimony. Uh, this place is amazing, and I got to give all glory to God just to start with. I grew up uh, Mormon and uh, got baptized by them, and, uh, you know, it kept me out of trouble for uh, a long time, but um, it didn't uh, prevent me from going through the things that you go through as a teenager, like the peer pressure and the things like that. You know, I always thought of myself as, a, you know, a good boy, pretty much. Growing up, never got into any trouble. But uh, high school came around, and the drinking then started. But then the Lord had grace on me, because I never really got it addicted, right? But it wasn't until uh, I got um, probably in my late, late 20s, and uh, the anxiety, the demons of anxiety had started coming up, and alcohol was... One of the things that I, I learned, I became more talkative. I became uh, more comfortable around women. And, and then the devil's like, see, you know, this is good for you. And the Bible says there's a way that seems right to a man but leads, leads to death. And, um, you know, but your friends around you and, you know, were telling me that, you know, this is, this is good. And growing up in Southern California, I got into the music business. And you won't believe how many... Uh, you know, demons are in there, and um, so that went on for many years, and uh, just found myself trapped, but I had known about the Lord, like the churches that I'd gone to had no, had no power, they, they would teach us the word, and people would stand up and sing, and the music sounded great, and, <laughs> but the word wasn't going forward with any power, and so people would come out feeling good, and it's like you, you walk out of church on Sunday feeling good, and Next week, you're back in the club, you know. And so that was my cycle for a long time and um, wound up making some uh, changes with career. And luckily, I, grace of God, had parents that were 
very uh, close to me. They, uh, they were very supportive. My mom was pretty much new age feminist, but always tr kind of knew about the Lord but and trusted him to, to guide me. So I wound up uh, just reading the word and but not really grabbing hold of it, you know, and, uh, you know, but feeling like a, feeling like a good person. So I um, got into drugs and, uh, and then the Lord, and then just the devil just shut down everything, but the Lord never took his hand off me. But he was waiting for me to, like, take that step toward him, and I never did it. I remember this preacher coming to me saying, uh, this preacher is sitting, to me, sitting in front of me, telling me, you know, and I believe the Lord was speaking through him, saying, I have no plans to hurt you. And I'm sitting there. I was about to go to this man's church, and I'm kind of, like, high and jittery. Like, why is this man looking at me like that? And he's, he's like, the, he's, the Lord was speaking through him, saying, I have no plans to hurt you. Just, just come. And I'm like... No, <laughs> I'm not going to come. I'm like, I don't know what that guy was talking about. That guy's judging me, man. Let me get out of here. <laughs> Telling me about the, I know God. Yeah, but um, so the Lord was, he's never a, uh, the Lord's not a bully. He's like, he's like, he's like, all right, I'm going to, I see you're a hard nut to crack, but you will get cracked. <laughs> so, uh, so this whole cycle of going to churches, coming out of churches, going to churches went on for a long time. And, uh, uh, Wound up getting, uh, wound up meeting my wife, who, who happens to be right here. She was a high school sweetheart, and uh, we basically uh, went on this journey together of finding the Lord, right? And uh, so we wound up getting baptized, and the, uh, the mighty movement of the Lord came came upon me, uh, upon us both. We got baptized in uh, San Francisco, where it's freezing cold, and uh, but when we came out of the water, we were we were warmed with the Spirit of the Lord, and so I was like, okay, this is great. But the devil was like, nah. So I wound up backsliding and relapsing. And I knew nothing about deliverance. I knew nothing about deliverance. Went through this whole struggle. And um, as I came out of the water and, got, and, and getting baptized, the Lord was, was with me. Walking this walk of, uh, of, of holiness was just something I didn't think I could do. And the devil came and got on me and was like, you're going to... Uh, you're going to get back into meth. You're going to get back into drugs. And I was like, okay. So, but the Lord spoke to me and said, your cup is filling, son. Your cup is filling. And if you continue in this way, you, I felt I was going to die. But I didn't know quite what I was going to do. And um, then the alcoholism just got worse. And my wife was basically uh, just struggling with me. And uh, Brother Pete happened to be at uh, one of the other churches that we go to. And my wife was like, well, speak to him. And I saw him. And then right when I saw him, something said, don't talk to him. And I was like, <laughs> I, was like I was like, all right. When my, my, and my wife was at home. She was like, so, you know, so I got home. And my, my wife was like, did you uh, speak to Brother Pete? I was like, yeah, I said, I said hello to him. I spoke to him. So, uh, you know, some, so this whole thing with the alcoholism went back and forth. And it was a struggle because I, I knew the Lord and I loved the Lord. And I was reading his word and his word was, was getting inscribed in my heart, but like the scriptures say, as soon as the word is planted in you, the, the enemy comes to try to remove it. And once the word is removed, then we really, uh, we, we can't operate. The Lord is just, he can't move in us. So uh, my wife and I had gone through a, a battle um, again with, uh, with alcohol. They found some, some receipts and, uh, you know, and the Lord was like, well, he hasn't listened to me, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something. So as my wife is sitting next to me, I'm hugging her. A text comes in of the of the money I just spent, three dollars and twenty five cents. My wife was like, three dollars and twenty five cents. What'd you buy? I'm like, uh, coffee, uh, lottery tickets. It was uh, something, you know. It's coming. To, my wife looked at me. She goes, "Tell me," and I, I couldn't tell her. I just couldn't say that I just drank, and the, and the devil was in my mind was saying to me, "Well, you don't drink all night anymore. What's what's the big deal? The Lord will still love you. It's all right." But I, but what the Lord had put on my heart, he's like, you're hurting people, son. You're, and I go, I don't know how to stop hurting people. And I'm thinking I'm a good person because I go to church all the time. I'm a good person. But I was into, I hadn't found the Lord. I hadn't found Christianity. I found churchianity. And th that's just the, just going there with no power. And um, I remember my wife was crying. I was crying. And um, she was, we became roommates. She was in the other room. Uh, in the second room, and I just remember crying out to the Lord, saying, Lord, can you please, can you please do something about this? I surrender my life to you, Father. Just 
guide me. And um, I saw Brother Pete again. He, he had called me, and I was, and I was, and I was driving back, back uh, home, and uh, Deliverance Center was, was on a Thursday. Deliverance Center was going on. I'm like, I'm not going to that place. And then Pete called me again, and I looked, and I was on a 17 going home. I'm not going to that place. And then I looked, and then something said, turn the car around, go. And I'm like, go? I go, I got groceries in the back. He goes, I'll, he goes go. So I came. I walked in here. I didn't know what to expect. And uh, I felt like, uh, if you guys know what a, I don't know if, you, if there's any parents in here, how like a little kid, how little toddlers stand up and they have wobbly knees. And they'll stand up on something and they're like standing up. That was me. And the Lord was like, like a dad saying, come to me. Come to me, but you're going to have to let go of, of the thing that you're standing up on. And that was my alcoholism, my pride, my drug use, and all these things I need to be delivered from. And so uh, I looked at the Lord, and it was like I had to trust that he would catch me, that he would catch me with my wobbly knees that had been standing on my own goodness. And uh, I decided to let it go, and he caught me. So I came in here, and, and Brother Mike and Kelly had cast out alcoholism, cast out rejection. And I came again, and Brother Mark, uh, Mike was casting out the rejection demon, the pride, and the, and the tears just bawled. And, and I tell you, when I, when I, I, no one had ever done that. I never felt that the power of God move in a way where my knees were buckling, my back was, this, this thing had been put in me through generations of rejection and of, and of, and of self-pride. And uh, I tell you, brothers and sisters, when the Lord released me from that, um, and the Lord caught me, and he put me, on a, he put me on the straight and narrow, and I walked. And I, and I walked. I said, all right, Lord, I'll, I'll just trust you. And I had a willingness and humility. And he said, I make all things new. And the old you is, is gone. And I have been alcohol-free and drug-free uh, for over a year now. And he has changed me. <laughs> and, <laughs> and he can uh, do it for you, too, also. So all glory to God. Because he is in the turnaround business, and he is a miracle worker and a way maker. Amen. Great word, man. That's so awesome. Let's give it up for all three of these folks. Thank you, Lord. We praise your name. Um, yeah, he's in the turnaround business, all right. There's a lot of people here. I know there's many, many miracles in here. I know there's many more on YouTube. We hear about them all the time. We get testimony after testimony, and it's through deliverance, you know, and it's time to rise up, church. Right now, it's time to rise up. <clears throat> Come on, boys, work. Um, it's time to rise up because uh, we're entering into the end times. It's very clear. You can see it all around. There's a lot of stuff going on, and it's time to rise up and get our loved ones saved, bring in the people who don't know Jesus, bring them into the kingdom, and the way we do that is we're going to have to get rid of fear, okay? We can't be afraid of people or situations or the Chinese coming or this or that or different sicknesses. No, we are children of God. We are not going to fear. We are going to stand on the word of God, and we're going to rise up and overcome. We're going to go forth boldly. So tonight, that's what we're working on. We're going to cast out fear. We're going to overcome it. I got a word from the Lord, so let me run through this real quick. Tony, you want to turn this one off? Okay. So you probably noticed Rick's not here tonight. My name is Pete Stevens. For you on YouTube, I came here about four years ago, strung out on heroin. Um, Rick prayed for me, cast some spirits out. I walked out the front door, and I've been sober ever since. I relapsed uh, a couple times. The last time when I relapsed, I died on fentanyl, and the Lord showed me that that was it. And I've been walking steady now for a few years, and God's just been so good to me. And it's just to be up here preaching the message. <laughs> Hallelujah! <laughs> I mean, I'm like, and on the way down here, I, I, I look to my right, and I see this guy walking, tweaking, looking around with a backpack. And the Lord showed me, he goes, that, that was you. 
I almost started weeping, but I had to keep my composure. I was like, man, he's done so much for me. And tonight I'm up here doing my thing. Rick said, hey, I'm going to be out of town. Can you handle it? I said, yes. And I'll tell you what, fear took hold of me. I had to overcome fear. So I'm, I'm practicing what I'm preaching because I'm preaching on overcoming fear tonight. And I'm doing it right now. And you guys are all going to do it too because we're going to overcome our fear. We're never going to shrink back. No, we are going to move forward in power, the power of God, because he's living inside you. You have God living inside you. There's nothing you can't do. You're all overcomers. Okay. So let me see what I got here. So what I'm talking about tonight is faith and fear, okay? Um, So as I was writing this, I was calling some friends some of them are here. Hey, you got any ideas? What I got a word or any, what I should preach on scripture? And all that was doing was causing me, I wasn't trusting in the Holy Spirit. I was leaning on my own understanding. And the Lord had already shown me, trust in him and lean not on your own understanding. And the moment I called on him, it was about five hours ago, four hours ago, I was with my wife. And uh, mass panic and confusion was setting in. Because I wasn't trusting in him. When I calmed myself down, we prayed, Father, we trust in you. He started just putting the words in my mouth. I go, honey, type on the computer. And he was just speaking it out. And this is what he gave me. I'm going to read it to you right now. I wrote it down so I wouldn't forget any of it. Um, So in these last days, as we look around, we see fear looming on every horizon. We are surrounded by fear. Fear of war, fear of pestilence, fear of financial loss and many other fears. This is from the enemy. Fear must be eliminated. Fear has to be taken out of the equation. Now we've already we've seen the miracles God has done here tonight. Let's get our fear out tonight. In a little while we're going to cast out our fear. Whatever fear you have, let's cast it out tonight so we can walk in power. Um Uh, Fear is the opposite of faith. Fear triggers doubt. I call this the satanic left-right jab. The devil puts the lie in our mind, and we believe the lie. Fear takes hold and brings forth doubt. When we have doubt, our faith is not complete. When there's doubt mixed in with our faith, Mike does a really good teaching on, on pistis and pistuo. Pistis is faith, and when it's tainted with doubt, unbelief or fear it's it's weak it's not whole when we're walking in total faith okay all in 100 percent faith man god's powerful we can stand on the word of god and say it and believe it and it happens i saw it today a lady got healed i don't know what her sickness was she was rushing she was cutting my hair and i go hey if you ever need if you ever get sick I'll pray. I was trying to tell them about, they were Muslims, Russian Muslims. I never even heard of that. And um, <laughs> I know I'm like, Russian Muslim, wow, that's interesting. <laughs> but that's what they were, and they hardly spoke any English. And, um, and I was telling the one girl, and I noticed the lady was cutting my hair, and she started weeping. And she goes, oh, she's really sick. And I go, well, that's why I'm here. And I couldn't believe it. I, wasn't, I didn't shrink back at all. I was like, well, do you want to get healed? She looked at me. Do you want to be healed? You know? She didn't understand. I go, do you want Jesus to heal you? And she started just bawling. And I knew, already knew God was going to do it because I was weeping too. And I was laughing, so I knew he was going to do it. When I cry and laugh, I know God's already done the work, and that's why I was there. And it was, on, it was today, so it was perfect. And then after I got my hair cut, I paid her, and I said, hey, let's pray. There was like five people in there. And she goes, okay, I'll pray for you too. I go, no, right now we're going to. Pray healing. And um, she goes, oh, no. She kind of got scared. So I, was, we went outside, and I prayed healing over her. I asked her, I go, do you, want, do you believe he can heal you? And she said, yes. And I prayed for her. I believe she got healed. It was amazing. She was weeping. I was weeping. But anyways, that's how we need to be. That's, we can't have fear. We must. Our, my faith is whole. I'm up here preaching with no fear because I've cast all the fear out. I was a coward my whole life. I was afraid of everything. I used to just 
love people. I just loved people. And um, that wasn't cool where I grew up. I grew up on bikers and drug addicts. And you don't love people. We got to hate everybody and act tough. Hell's Angels and Dirty Dozens and all them guys, you know. No, we don't do that. We don't cry. We, we hate everybody. We kill people. We smash. So I went around smashing and hurting and doing all this crazy stuff. But really, what I noticed about most of those guys are they're just scared little boys. I know this because I was one of them, <laughs> you know. They're all scared little boys. That's how they get like that. And uh, most of them need Jesus. That's what I needed. But um, So I lived in fear my whole life. Fear, fear, fear. The only time I didn't have fear is when I was shooting up drugs. So I did drugs my whole life. And when I got sober, I realized I'm just riddled with fear. Fear of this, fear of everything. I was so scared of everything because I wasn't high. And so I have overcome fear now. God's done it for me. I constantly cast fear out still. First thing in the morning, fear out. Fear to whatever comes my way. I fear you go. Fear, doubt, and unbelief, we cast it out daily. Fear will steal your ministry. I used to come in here and help Rick out when the altar call came. I would always sit over there right where Robert is, and, and sometimes I'd be so scared, I would get up. Trying to go over there to get my badge on, I would go out that door, fear, 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 fear of praying with people, fear, ah, and I would go out the door and go home. <laughs> And on the freeway, I'd be going, ah, oh, I did it again. Oh, hey, but you know what? We cast that stuff out. We don't tolerate fear. Fear is the devil's number one tool. He wants to rob you. Because listen, it's right around the corner, folks. We're all going to be in heaven soon. When we get there, man, let's really go for it. Let's go for this thing. Let's go all in, man. Let's get the fear cast out and go all in. Okay. Go big for Jesus Christ. You got God living in you. There's nothing you can't do. Let's do it. So all fear has got to leave tonight. Okay, let me get back down on this. Okay. So when we walk in doubt, then unbelief takes over. Um, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 10, 5, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, which is the word of God bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. This is how we renew our minds. Every negative thought that comes into our minds through the TV, YouTube, etc., must be crushed. We must take hold of our thoughts, okay? Fear comes creeping in. Fear comes into your heart. It takes over everything. We should not fear because we have God in us. 2 Timothy 1.7 says it's a spirit. The Lord did not give the spirit of fear. He gave the spirit of love, power, and sound mind, which tells us two things. One, fear is of the devil. We all know this. Fear is from the devil. It's not from God. The Lord did not give the spirit of fear. The Lord gave the spirit of love, power, and sound mind. So we have access to love, power, and sound mind. That's another thing. Um, so we must take hold of our thoughts, okay? We hold our thoughts captive. And everything that comes in, um, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. So when we hear, oh, you're no good. You're not worthy. That doesn't line up with the word of God. It says, I know, I, I know the thoughts and the plans I have for you in Jeremiah 20 and 11. It doesn't say I'm not worthy. This is the importance of knowing the word of God. We must renew our minds with the word of God. You guys, it's so important. Jump on the Pete and Rick and, and Daniel bandwagon. I'm sure a lot of people, we, we try to do 10 chapters a day, you know. 10 chapters, cram that word of God and get on it. Get in it. Get the word in your mind. Forget about the stuff in the world. Forget about the YouTube scrolling, the, the YouTube doom scrolling, Facebook, television. Forget about that stuff. Get in the Word of God. We're going to need it. We need to stand on the Word of God. He'll keep those in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. We keep our minds stayed on thee because He is the Word. Jesus is the Word. We keep our minds in perfect peace as we stay on him, we focus on him in the word. Um, you must practice this technique in your mind until you have it mastered. All I can do is tell you how I did it. 
I go next door to a church. It's a big, beautiful courtyard. I started walking because when I pray, I fall asleep. I have a little multi poo. His name's Pup. He's my little prayer buddy. I love him dearly. Um, yes, very much. I've gotten probably an unhealthy soul tie with him, but that's <laughs> another story. <laughs> no, it's, it's, but anyways, so I would go out walking because I didn't want to fall asleep praying, and I, I ended up at this church. It was just beautiful. I was like, wow, I'd be there at 3, 4 in the morning, and the Lord would show up there. So I started walking around. This is how I did it. I would practice because the first thing when I wake up, these thoughts would come into my head. Oh, you didn't work hard enough. You didn't do this. You, that, that, that. Right when I wake up, I'm just trying to drink some coffee. Boom, the devil's just hammering me with these tormenting thoughts. And I was still loaded back then with spirits. So what I would do is I would walk around and very slowly, I, re I read that scripture, but I didn't know how to do it. And I was just praying, Lord, how do I get my mind? And I listened to some stuff Mike did and Rick did. Couldn't really grasp it. So what I started doing was I would take one little thought. At 35 years of doing drugs, this thing was damaged bad. Still, God's still healing it. I would take one thought at a time. Boom, you're no good, Pete. Okay? Hey, that doesn't line up with the word of God. I would say it out loud. I would say it out loud. I'd take you captive thought. And I cast you down in Jesus' name. Boom. Okay? In Jesus' name. And then I would cast out the effects from it. If anything came in, if I took hold of that thought, believed that lie, I cast that devil out now. In Jesus' name. Rejection, whatever came in, fear, doubt. And I started doing that little by little. And, and now my machine is like a mine. Boom, boom, boom. It's like a machine gun. Your mind's quick too. You take hold of those thoughts. They come in, cast them down. Bam. Do one at a time first. YouTubers, do one at a time. Then you'll start, your mind will just automatically take them, take them, take them. Send them down the river. Send them down the river. You'll know if they're God. Let me, let me keep going. So here's how you do it. Amen, Tony. Here's how you do it. The thought comes in. You take hold of it. Boom. Does it line up with the word of God? Nope. If it's a thought, you're no good. Nope. The word of God says that I'm a son of God. Oh, what manner of love is this? The Father has bestowed on us that we should be called sons of God. We know that our Father doesn't down-talk us. We know better than that. We know enough of the word. So we take hold of it, okay? If the answer is no, you must cast it down and send it away. You can ask God to help you do this. This is why we must know the word of God. We must fill our minds with the word of God. Hebrews 4.12 says, For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit, of joints and marrow. And this is a discerner and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. What? Man, that is a weapon right there. The word of God is a weapon. Here's some scriptures on faith that are going to help us. Now we're talking about fear. The opposite of fear is? Let me hear one the opposite of fear is? Faith. 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 Okay. Um, so in Hebrews 11.1, 1, this is all New King James. That's just what I, I prefer. I, know, I like Young's too, but King, New King James is good. Um, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Hebrews 11.6, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Now listen, I'm here to tell you, I don't know how this came about. I'm just a dude that was a junkie. All my veins are shot out. I did drugs for 35 years, shot up my neck, both my legs. I went to the the doctor the other day, and he's like, you got to get a blood test. I'm like, ah, oh, man, blood test. <laughs> um, don't have any veins left. But God, because I've been diligently seeking him, I don't even know why. He just gave me a hunger. I like praying. I seek him. I strive to read the word. I cast out devils. I want to know him. 
That's what we got to be. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. I can tell you, I live in a trailer, but I have a loving wife. I have cars. I have money. I have everything. I have peace. I have joy. Oh, my goodness. I have a relationship with Father that's incredible. I know he's my father. I know he's living right in here with me, and I'll never be alone. If everything's gone and I'm wandering around the desert, I know he's with me. It's priceless. Come on. We can all have that. We can all walk in that and, and be secure because the bottom line is when we all cross on into glory, the next thing that happens, we're not going to be sitting with our wife or a husband or our kids or our friends. Nope. You're going to be sitting here alone with God. So get to know him now. It makes things a lot easier, I'm sure. You know, uh, I was going to tell you a joke, but another time. <laughs> it's a good one. <laughs> it's, it's innocent. Um, I'll just tell it real quick. <laughs> okay, so uh, there's a guy, he's getting ready to die, right? And he's, uh, the angel comes down, boom, says, hey, you're going to die tomorrow, man. And he's like, what? Oh, no, that's terrible. He goes, well, can I bring anything to heaven with me? He goes, I don't know. Let me go ask St. Peter. Choo! Angel goes back up, ask St. Peter. He says, yeah, I can bring one suitcase. Bam, comes back down. And he goes, okay, you can bring one suitcase. St. Peter says, cool, you can bring one suitcase with you. It's okay. And um, <laughs> it's funny too. But, um, so he, the next day he, he, he goes out and he sells everything he has. Man, dang. And he sells his house, cashes in out his 401K, borrows money, fills his, his, his uh, suitcase up with gold. He's like, yeah, I'm ready now. Boom, he dies. <laughs> The angel comes back, all right, hey, you ready to go? He's like, yep, I'm ready. And his spirit, take him back up to heaven and to the gate. St. Peter's there, goes, hey, I got to check your suitcase, dude. And he unzips it. Zip, zip. You brought pavement to heaven? <laughs> Corny, but <laughs> um, it's a good one, huh, Robert? <laughs> the only <laughs> innocent joke I know. Okay, but let me keep going here. So um, he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him because um, I see that in here. This is a, I see the power of God move here. There's some God seekers in here. I see their lives change. You guys heard the testimonies today. Amen. You heard it. YouTubers, I know you God seekers on there. You wouldn't be watching this channel. You guys are getting set free and delivered. You're overcoming obstacles that most people, most churches never happens. They sit in a pew for 20 years and, and that's it. Nothing ever happens, nothing ever changes. It's through deliverance. It's through renewing the mind with the word of God. We've got to cast out the spirits and then replace our mind. Scripture, scripture, scripture. We need scripture. We need the word of God in there to trust, to stand, to get through these perilous times that are coming at us. Full force might. Okay. Onward ho. So Mark 23, Mark 23 says, Jesus said to him, if you can believe, all things are possible for him who believes. This is my favorite scripture, just because if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. And that's true. All things are possible. We see it all the time. Miracles are starting to happen. Healing, tremendous healings. A guy's eyes got healed the other day. It was amazing. It's just one thing after another. Man, you've got to take hold of this thing. Believe, believe, believe. That's your faith. It, you've got to believe. The word of God is the truth. YouTube's no truth. Facebook's not truth. The news ain't truth. It's all confusion and lies to keep you from the truth. That's what it is. Guys kind of sounded like Rick there for a second. That's funny. <laughs> Love that guy. He's my mentor. But yeah, it, it's all lies and confusion. And it's designed to take you away from the truth. It's designed to keep you from reading your Bible. Man, now is the time to cram the word of God into your mind. Listen to it when you sleep. Listen to it while you're driving in your car. Read it with your friends. Study it. Spend time in it. Read it, read it, read it. And then what? What? Do it. 
James 1, 22, be a doer of the word. You must do the word. John 14 says, chapter 14 says six times, if you love me, do my commands. If you love me, do my commands. Those who love me, do my commands. If you don't love me, you're not doing my commands. It says it back and forth six or seven times. Um, we've got to read the word and then do the word. When you do the word, you lock it in. Instant wisdom in your mind. You're doing it. You can start out small. Okay, be kind to your neighbor. Love your neighbor. Walk over and say, hey, hello, neighbor. I want to try out. I want to be a doer of the word, so I'm going to say hi and tell you I love you. I live over here. Say, hey, no, I'm serious. Start small. That's what I do. I start really small. Our Bible study, we, we go over what we learned, and then we practice doing it. Little steps. And it gives you strength, man. You lock that stuff in. When you become do it, it comes a part of you. You start living it. You're living the word of God. You're walking in the word. And the word is Christ. Okay. If you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Um, so Jesus answered. This is Matthew 21, uh, chapter 21, verse 21, 22. So Jesus answered and said to them, Assuredly, I say to you, if you have faith and do not doubt, you will not only do what is done to the fig tree, which was withered by his words, but also if you say to this mountain, be removed, I think it was King James, be thou removed and cast into the sea, it will be done. And whatever things you ask in prayer, Believing you will receive. Okay? There it is right there. Whatever things you ask in prayer, believing you will receive. That's the word of God. Okay, um, so uh, true faith manifests itself through our actions. Okay? So if we have faith, like there's a chair here. Uh, I'm not going to question one. Of, well, maybe, I, maybe it won't hold me. Better check it. No, I just sit down, you know. Faith. I have faith in that chair. So true faith manifests itself through our actions. We've got to move in our faith. Jump up, cast out demons, go lay hands on the sick, go preach the gospel. Believe. First Corinthians 16, 13. Watch, stand fast in the faith, be brave, be strong. Matthew 17, 20 says so Jesus said to them because of your unbelief for surely I say to you if you have faith as a mustard seed you will say to this mountain move from here to there and you will move and nothing will be impossible for you hey thank you for that great testimony bless you guys on your trip back to where Santan God bless you guys have a great night thank you yeah Hey, he's just getting started with you. Stand on the word of God, walking it, moving it. Bless you guys. Move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible. These are the words of Jesus. Jesus said to them, Robert, Jesus said to them, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, authority over everything, the one who does not lie, said, because of your unbelief, for surely I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. Okay, here we go. When we have the word of God in our mind, then we can discern who it is speaking to us. We will know the truth, and the truth will set us free. Okay, we will recognize the truth because we will know the truth. Everything else we will cast out because he who is in us is greater than he who is in the world. Let's not forget that, that the Holy Ghost is part of God. He's the third part of the Trinity. He is the Spirit of God and he's living in all. Is everybody here born again? If you're not, it's okay. We can take care of it in a couple of minutes. Okay, great. So you're all born again, so you all have the living Son of God living in you. And all his promises are yes and amen. Even the Old Testament, everything in there, you can stand on all of it. It's all for you. 
It's all his word. It's all for you. It's all available, every bit of it, okay? Um, where was I here? <clears throat> that we will recognize the truth because we will know the truth. Everything else we will cast out because he who is in us, right here, is greater than he who is in the world. That's the devil. We need to cast out all fear and our faith goes up. I've got some scriptures here. Um, Joshua 1, 9. What we're doing here is in a few minutes, we're going to cast out fear. We're going to cast it out. It's going to come out, out of all of us. Me too. I always cast out fear. Fear is the one thing that will steal all your plans. It'll rob you. It'll, it'll keep you from going. Fear can keep you out of heaven. Fear is an awful thing. Fear is a destroyer. I think it's the worst possible thing. Fear has hindered my walk with God. Fear has caused me so much grief. It's lies. You have the Holy Ghost living inside you. You have God in you. You have his word right here. If you're wondering, you can write these scriptures down. I'm going to read them here in a minute. You have all these. They're all yours for the taking. You can pick a scripture and stand on it, and you say that thing with faith. You believe it because it's the word of God. It's true. In the old days, they would put their hand on the Bible and swear in court. They don't do it now, but they used to. This fallen, horrible world we're in now, they used to do it because it was the truth. Because he is the truth. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. Our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, Joshua 1, 9. Have I not commanded you, be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Wherever you go. This was in the Old Testament. And now he's in us. Truly, he is in us. And he is wherever we go. He's with us. He's in here right now cheering me on. Go, Pete. Go. I love you. I love you. Don't worry. I'm with you. I'm using his word. It's strong. It's alive. It's powerful. It's active. It's a discerner. There's nothing like the word of God. Um, Isaiah 41.10. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Thank you, Lord. Psalms 27, verse 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? That'd be a good one to hang on to. You could just read that, memorize it, and then you could just meditate on it. And you get strength from it because the word is living. It's alive. It feeds our inner spirit, man. I know I'm probably telling you guys stuff you already know, but this was from the Lord, so I'm just laying it out here. Um, Psalms 46, 1 through 3. 1 through 3. Uh, David says, God, David says through the Holy Spirit, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, even though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling. I like that first line. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Wow. Psalms uh, 118.6 says, The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do to me? You know? Hey, I'm not, I don't have no fear. I ask my wife. I'm always telling, hey, when the nukes come, I'm going to be out there. Praise God. I'm going home to glory. I'm going to go be with the one I've been seeking with everything I got. I'm going to finally see him face to face. And I'm excited for that. But I'm not going to get off that easy. So, um, Anyways, uh, the Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do to me? I think it says in the Bible, uh, be afraid of the one who can rip you to pieces and cast you into hell. <laughs> Something like that. Para Pete, paraphrase. Uh, Deuteronomy 31.6, Be strong and of good courage. Do not fear nor be afraid of them. For the Lord, your God, he is the one who goes with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. John is my favorite. John 14.27, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let your heart 
not, be, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. That was Jesus speaking in John 14. Let me read that again. Peace I leave with you. Oh, that's why they call him the Prince of Peace. Peace I leave, you, leave with you. We can receive his peace. Just take it. Read the scriptures. Uh, Philippians 4, 6, and 7, and 8. Read those, and you'll get the peace of God. I do. I did it today. Got loaded down with I had to stop and listen over and over again. I was like, man, I'm getting peace from the word. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives, do I give to you. Let your heart not be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Those are commands. Let your heart not be troubled, neither let it be afraid. We are not to be afraid. We are not to fear. Fear is from the devil. If we're living in fear, this is what I always tell people. I get some strange look. You're worshiping the devil. If you're living in fear, you're bowing down to Satan. You're worshiping him if you're obeying that fear. Like when I used to go out that door and go out. I was <clears throat> worshiping the devil. I'm obeying him. No, nope. we don't fear nothing. We fear God. We don't fear man. Fear of man is a, is a snare, says in Proverbs. It's a trap. It's a trick. We fear God alone. Okay. Um, oh, hang on, Joey. Let me. If you guys knew the, the chaos that was going on about getting this word today, you'd be tripping because my wife and I, we're still tripping. We get, this word came to me from the Lord, like boom, boom, boom. It's like when I quit calling people and asking for help, I just said, Holy Spirit, I'm going to ask you for help. It was so easy, wasn't it, honey? It was great. And I go, just type, honey. Just give me a word. Type, type. And she's typing. I go, and she goes, well, I think we should put and. In the, no, no, just, just like that. It's from him. Keep going. And then we get it all done. <laughs> and it's, it's not the first time. The third time, the power goes out. <laughs> Boom, she's about ready to hit Prince. I'm like, well, how can this be? We've been wrestling with printers and trying to figure stuff out. It's, Stuff that she uses every day, it normally just print works. When you start doing God's work, everything comes against you. So I'm like, honey, we got 45 minutes. I got to go take a shower. God, please make it work. And I went. And uh, I get home, I didn't even realize, you know, I, I called Rick. I go, dude, you wouldn't believe the opposition that's going on here. This is crazy. He goes, yeah, it's real. It's a fight. And I go, okay. And then I, I hung out with Puppy for a few minutes. And I go and I didn't even think about it. The power's on. <laughs> like 10 minutes later, I'm like, I'm shaving. I'm like, oh, the power's on, duh. <laughs> and and, and um, so, yeah, it was, uh, it was real. And, then, and so she, the power came. She came walking up, and she goes, man, I lost everything on the computer when the power went. I'm like, what? But she had a little smirk, and she goes, but I hit the print button on the computer when the power, and it all printed up. It was the, the Lord. He was our helper today. He helped us. The devil tried to steal my voice. That didn't work. I had Josh Owens pray for me, cast that thing out. All these people looking at me, hey, are, are you all right? Knock on the wall, are you okay? I'm all, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm doing deliverance. I'm like, oh, deliverance? But that's another story. At a Mormon water store. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> um, okay, so. So now, children, Scripture is clear. We must remove all filthiness of the flesh and spirit. Okay? Let me read that to you again. Did I skip a page here? I might have. Nope. Um, so now, children, this is just what I heard, so I had my wife type it up. Now, children, I believe it was God talking to me, to you guys, to the people on YouTube. The Scripture is clear. We must remove all filthiness of the flesh and spirit. When it says spirit there, well, flesh is cigarettes, nicotine, spirit, demons, demons. Second Corinthians 7, 1, therefore, having these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. That's 2 Corinthians 7, 1. That's a good. So let us renounce all fear and make room for the word of God. I'm going to say a prayer, and you can repeat it out to me from your hearts. And I believe tonight we'll all be set free from fear, including myself, hopefully. 
We're going to move forward in power. We want to be effective. We could go home tomorrow. There's, there's talk. Just turn the TV on if you don't believe it. It's, everyone's talking nuclear wars. Did they forget Hiroshima? Did they forget what these things do? Did they forget the 400,000 people that were killed in Hiroshima from one little bomb? Did they forget? They're all talking about it now. Kim Jong-un fired what, 18 missiles the other day. It's nuts. There's new waves of viruses kind of getting ready to come. It's just nuts. The food shortage, this, that, the diesel's running out. Our president, bless his heart. I don't know what's going on. We should pray for him right now. He's running things. They say they're, they're bringing Obama back in. I don't know, but it, it's complete madness if you just look. And that's just a couple of things. But listen, we've got to rise up in power now. Now's the chance to take this thing, to take it. Let's take it tonight. Let's go all out. Who cares who's listening to us, what we're doing? Man, when I, when I call you guys up here, the ministry team's going to come. They're all anointed. They're gonna, the Holy Ghost is already here. He's moving. The Word of God's been preached. The Word of God's doing its work. He's cutting, hacking. We're going to get rid of that fear. And then we're going to make room for the word of God in us. And our faith is going to rise up. And we're going to lay hands. Once you see a couple people healed by your power, like that haircutting lady today, I bind you sickness. I cast you out. I command healing in Jesus' name. She got healed. I knew because I was weeping and laughing at the same time. When that happens, I know God's doing something because he's the only one that can do that. And you'll, your faith will start growing exponentially. Once you see a demon come out of someone, someone gets healed or raised up or a blind eyes open or a dead person raised, your faith will grow and all that stuff's going to be happening soon. Tonight's the night we're going to take care of fear. That's the only thing I've totally overcome. Well, heroin and everything else, but fear, fear is the one thing that held me back, tried to destroy me. And I have some more good news. We're all probably going to get out of here kind of early because I don't preach for an hour and a half. <laughs> I, I don't have it. <laughs> um, I got another good joke, though, real quick. <laughs> okay, so what... <laughs> I know a pastor that would be really upset with me. He talks not to be joking um, in, in the pulpit. <laughs> but um, <laughs> what... Um, I'm not mocking, just saying. What what uh what kind of lights did the ark have on it? What kind of lights did the ark have on it? Flood lights. Yeah. Oh, you knew it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. So let us renounce all fear and make room for the word of God. Because fear corrupts faith, okay? Fear corrupts faith. We can't have fear, okay? Okay, you guys. Here's what we're going to do. I like how Mike always goes. <laughs> no one. <laughs> oh, he did it. Yeah, I always wanted to do that. <laughs> oh, now I can't see. I need a little bit of light. <laughs> It's a black light up here. Okay. Um, now I can see. I'm okay. Kill, put him back. It's good. I can see it. <clears throat> okay, Lord, I gave him everything you gave me. I thank you, Lord, that I came up here. I didn't have one bit of fear in me tonight. I thank you so much for that, Lord. Even though the devil tried to take my voice, hinder my printer, hinder my, shut my power for 10 minutes, came against me with everything he had, I'm still here. And Lord, I thank you that I didn't have one ounce of fear tonight. And Lord, I'm praying Holy Ghost power does the very same thing for every single person in here. I pray Holy Spirit move on this section. Holy Spirit move over the men and women of God. Holy Spirit move on the middle section too and, and drive out every bit of fear, every hindrance hindering spirit of fear that's trying to rob us of our Holy Spirit ministry of healing, reconciliation, preaching the gospel, raising the dead, doing miracles, signs, wonders. I pray the Holy Ghost move on this section here in power tonight, Lord. 
drive out all fear. May we have, I command the miracle of fear leaving all of us tonight. All of it. Not some of it. All of it, Lord. You're a big God. You're the miracle worker. Mike, said, Mike Smith says that God is tired of holding the miracles. Well, tonight I command a miracle that all fear would leave us tonight. Every single person in here. Okay, here we go. I want everybody to repeat after me, okay, and say it like you mean it, okay? You ready? All right. I take authority. Come on, say it like I take authority over every foul demon spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. You have no re legal right or grounds to reside in this body. Jesus Christ defeated you at Calvary 2,000 years ago. And now you must loose me and flee in Jesus' name. I ask you, Lord, to execute this order of eviction. Satan, you and your demons must vacate God's property now. We forcibly remove you. In Jesus' mighty name. In, mighty name. In, the name In the name of Jesus Christ. I break all curses. Break all curses. On, both On both sides of our families. Back to Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve. Which, would Which would interfere with our marriages. Families. families. And, ministries. and ministries. And our relationship with you, Father. I destroy, I destroy every, legal every legal hold, ground and right, ground and right, ground and right, ground and right. That, demons have to work that demons have to work in my life, in my life. Specifically, spirits specifically spirits operating, operating in and causing fear. And causing fear. I bind and command all connected, all connected related, related, and resulting demons, and resulting demons of, fear of fear to leave me now, leave me now. In, Jesus in Jesus' name. Now, if you have fear, come up here to the altar. Come on up here. It's your, it's your act of faith. Run up here. Or not. I think you should. And get your fear cast out. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I come against you, fear, in the name of Jesus. You're going to take your filthy hands off the, off the ministers of God's word tonight. You're going to take your hands off the end-time army of God tonight. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Come, Lord. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Lord. Come, Lord, Jesus. Come, Lord. I've always wanted to do this, too. <laughs> come out. Come out of the people of God. Okay, just repeat after me, children of God. I renounce, I renounce all, fear all fear I've ever experienced, I've ever, experienced. I've ever obeyed, I've ever, I've ever operated in. I renounce it, I renounce it. Tonight. tonight. Oh, Father God, oh, Father God. I'm, so sorry. I'm so sorry. I cast it all down. I, it all down. I come against the spirits tonight. Specifically, spear, fear spirits. And I command them out of my body. In Jesus' name. Now come out. Come out of the woman of God. Come out. In Jesus' name, all fear go. Come out, fear. We had it with you, fear. We break your power. We break your power in fear. Come out of the mind. Come out of the mind. Come out of there. All fear go. All fear go. It's okay. Come out, fear. All fear. Fear of failure. Fear of not making God happy. Fear, fear, fear of the economy. Fear of war. Go. Come out in Jesus' name. You're not going to steal our ministries. We break our power, fear. We break your whole fear. Come out. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out of the woman of God. Touch your heart, Lord. Heal her wounds. Heal her wounds in her heart, Lord. Heal her wounds. Who hurt you? Someone hurt you. Who was it? Who hurt you? It's okay. Let those tears go. Come here. 
Let those tears go. Come out. Come out. Wounds in the heart. We bind your power. We break your hold. Let it go. Forgive him. Can you forgive him? Forgive him. Who was it? Just give me a name. Who was it? Huh? Darius. Who? Darius. Darius. Forgive him. Say, Father God. Father God. I forgive Darius. I forgive Darius. As a matter of fact. As a matter of fact. I pray for his salvation. I pray for his salvation. And I repent. And I repent. And I let him go. And I let him go. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Let those tears go. Come out. Darius, come out. Darius, I call you out in Jesus' name. Come out. Every spirit that came in from Darius, every wound, every rejection, every hurt, come out. Come out in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for doing it there. Let him go. God's catching your tears in the ball. He loves you. He loves you, daughter. Come out, Darius. Come out right now in Jesus' name. All the way out now. Come out of there. Come out. All the way out. I call you out in Jesus' name. Go, go, go. Come out. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out of there. Come out. All the way out. Darius, go. Darius, go. Have a bucket. Have a bucket. Come out, Darius, in the name of Jesus. Darius, you go. Come out of there. Darius, out. Up and out. Come out of there, Darius. Go in Jesus' name. Come out. All the way out. Come out of there. Go. Every wounded, every wound in the heart, come out. Come, Darius. We're so sorry, Lord. Come out, Darius. Come out. Come all the way out. We forgive him. We let him go now. Let her, let her go. Let her go in Jesus' name. Darius, come out. Darius, come out. Come out, Darius. Come out, Darius. Come out all the way out. All the way out in Jesus' name. All the way out. All the way out, Darius, go. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Come out, Darius. Every pain, every wound, every fear. Fear of being alone. Fear of never being with someone. Come out. I won't be alone. I'm with Father. He's right here. Father's right here. He's tabernacling in you. What's your name? Sierra. Sierra. Sierra, you'll never be alone. Sierra, you'll never be alone. That's the devil trying to lie to you. He wants to lie to you and say you'll be alone. Those are lies. Lies come out of the mind. Lies come out of the mind. Wound in the heart go. Wound in the heart go. Wound in the heart go. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out of the wound. Come out of the heart. Come out of the demon. Sit on that wound. Picking on it. Pick, pick, pick. We break your power. Break your power. Come out of there. Ooh. She'll never be alone. She'll never be alone. She's loved by Father. She's loved by Father God. She is loved. She's accepted all rejection. Come out, rejection. Come out right now in Jesus' name. I'll break your power. I call you out. Come out, rejection. Go. Come out there in Jesus' name. Come out. Come out there. Come out, rejection. Come out in Jesus' name. All the way out now. All the way out. All the way out. Come out. Come out. Rejection, go. Go, go, go. Hold it out. There he goes. There he goes. No rejection. You're accepted and beloved. You're accepted. You're accepted by the beloved, the Lord Jesus. Come on, man. Darius, go. Darius, go. Wounds from Darius. Be healed. Be healed and Jesus. Go. Come out. Hold it out. Go. Go, go, go in Jesus' name, go in Jesus' name, go in Jesus' name, go, 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 in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, come out, come out in Jesus' name, come out, come out in Jesus' name, come out, come out, there you go, come out, come out, come out, come out there, Darius, come out. Darius, go. Every spirit that came in from Darius, all rejection, go. All hurt, all pain, come out. Come out, rejection. Come out of there. Come out. We can't have her. We're calling you out tonight. All fear. All fear, rejection. You let fear in. We call you out. We call you out. Rejection. You open the door to fear. Now we got you out. We got you out every single one of you. We call you all out. All the way out. All the way out. All the way out. All the way out. Come out, Darius. Every one of you. Every one of you go. Every one of you go. Holy Ghost power. Rip into her, Lord, and bring healing. She can rise up and be strong. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out in Jesus' name. Rejection, go. Fear. 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 
fear this, fear be alone, go. We will not be alone, we have the Lord God inside us. He is with us, he is with us, come out. Here, go, come out, come out in Jesus' name, go. Get out of the devil, come out. All fear, go, come out of there, come out, come out, come out. Come out in Jesus' name, come out. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> what are you, are you struggling? What are you struggling with? Tell me your name one more time. Sierra, what are you struggling with? How can I pray with you? Okay, confusion. This is Bren. He's just, he follows me around. He prays with me. I'm going to have him be praying. So Bren, we got confusion. We're becoming against confusion. Fornication. Fornication, okay. Okay. Worthless. My mind is okay. playing against me. I've been feeling suicidal. Okay. Those are, those are, that's what I call snake venom. Those are lies that come into your head yeah. and they lie to you. And once you believe them or you entertain them, then they set in. We're going to cast those out right now. You are a child of God. You are special. I'm serious. You're a game changer. You're going to change the world. I'm serious. You got God living in you. How could you not change the world? Hey, if he'll use an old junkie like me, <laughs> come on now. He's going to use you, daughter of God. Come on. And, and I also like, right now I'm dealing with like confusion. God gave me a word like a couple years ago. Yeah. And I just have been doubting it and just frustrated because I don't see it happening. And so I've been in rebellion. Okay. And I just want clarity. I just need God to just help me. I just opened up doors. Okay. Like homosexuality thoughts. Just okay. It's bad. So. Okay. Okay. So, Father God, you just heard everything Sierra just said, Lord. Tonight she's drawing a line in the sand, right, Sierra? You're renouncing all that sin. You want to walk in holiness, right? Remember we just talked about 2 Corinthians 7, when we want to cleanse the temple. That's here because the Holy Spirit lives in here. He's in here with you. He's right there. I'm just going to touch her. I'm going to touch her. I'm just, that's where God is. He's in there. He's in there with you. And he, he doesn't want to share this temple. This temple is a special creation from Father God for Holy Ghost. He wants to operate through you in power and might. He wants to express his love to you, open up the scriptures to you. He doesn't like sin. We got to get that out of there. Come out, all homosexuality. I call you out right now. I'm so sorry, Lord. It's beyond me. I'm so sorry, Lord. I've been rebelling. I've been living in sin. Tonight, I renounce it all. I renounce it all, Lord. Especially the rebellion. I've been rebelling against you, and I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, Lord. I want this stuff out. Come out of me now. Tell it to go, Sierra. You got authority. You got God living in you. Come out. Come out, homosexuality, go. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out in the name of Jesus. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out of there. Go. All soul ties. All soul ties be broken now. All soul ties be broken now in the name of Jesus. All soul ties from homosexuality. Come out. Come out right now. We break your power. We sever you. We sever you. Go. Come out. We break you. We break you. Rip you out. We rip you out. We're going to walk in holiness now. Come out. Come out right now. Go, devil. I rip you out. 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 Come out. Come out. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out, little. Come out. All the way out in Jesus' name. All the way out in Jesus' name. All the way out in Jesus' name. Go. Go, devil. Go. Go. Come out. Come out in Jesus' name. I break your power. I break your power. Come out. All the way out. All the way out. Right now. Come out. All the way out. Come out. All the way out. Every soul tie. Every soul tie from watching porn. Every soul tie from pornography. I break you tonight. I just say it. I break all soul ties from watching porn and any sexual encounter I have. In Jesus' name. I break you, soul time. In the name of Jesus. I'm getting free tonight. I'm casting you out right now. Now come out. Tell him to go. Hate him, hate him, hate him. You gotta go. He wants to destroy you. Tell him to go. Come out. 
Soul ties go, soul ties go. In the name of Jesus, come out, come out, come out. Come out in Jesus' name, all the way out, all the way out. Thank you, Lord. Come out there, come out there, all the way out, devil. Go, 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 all the way out. Come out there, go, yeah, there he goes. Let her go, let her go, let her go now, all the way out. Come out, come out. Soul tie, we break your power. We break you. We cast you out. Come out, devil. Come out there, devil. Come out, you pervert. Come out there, pervert. Go. You can't have her. You can't have a new creation. New creation. Come out. She's cleansing her temple. Now come out. I speak the name of Jesus. You come out. Jesus Christ unto you. Jesus Christ unto you. Jesus of Christ unto you. Now come out. Come out. Come out there. All the way out now. Go, go, go. There he is. There he goes. Come out. Come out. Let her go. Up, up, up. Oh, in Jesus' name. There he goes. Let her go. Let her go. Come out. Come out. Every, every pornea spirit, I cast you out. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to get her water. Keep praying. Keep praying. I'll get her. Have you done the miracle list? You want to grab healed when he became a Christian, he developed this miracle list. It's based on Matthew 544. We forgive ourselves, we forgive everybody else, we make lists, and we go over it. They call it the miracle list because it works. Listen, you're already a miracle because you're getting freedom. Those are demons that came out tonight. And, and, and God wants to use you, like I said. Listen, if you want to speed up the process, Julie has a class. It's too, too um, you can look it up online. Um, Julie's here. It's, um, it's the miracle list class. Okay. And she can help you with it. You can go on there, just get a notepad, write those things out, pray. Don't rush through it, but start working on it. Really take the time and work on it. Because God wants to use you. He wants to heal you. He wants you to be completely free. And you're going to be free. Yeah. Thank you, Yeah. And come back and see us. Yeah. And, and listen. Don't sin, YouTubers, when you get free from deliverance. Um, don't sin. You'll get seven times worse. Yes. The Bible says. I've seen it happen. Yes. Yes. So walk in holiness. Yes. Come back here and see us. Mike will be teaching tomorrow night, the guy who wrote the Miracle List. Oh, really? He'll be here tomorrow night at 7. Amazing teacher. you got to come see him. Rick's normally here on Thursday. I'm just filling in for him. Okay. This thing works. I know because I was on heroin my whole life. You wow. heard Lima. And tonight I'm here preaching. God wants to use you in mighty ways. Okay? Okay, come back and see us. If you can, come tomorrow at 7. You, yeah, it's amazing. All right, bless you. Thank you so much. You did great tonight. Thanks. You did too. <laughs> you got free. The Holy Ghost hit you. <laughs> hey, you got to keep going. You got to keep going. It's like a layer of onions. There's layer and layer and layer. Um, I, came, I came here like two months ago, a month ago, and I did deliverance, and I, did good, and I felt a major relief, and I went back to yeah. sin, and it yeah, Don't do worse. that again. Yes. Just start coming here. You can make friends here. Yeah. Julie's right over. I don't know where she is. She's here. Um, 
Where is she? She's right there. Um, she knows. Hey, when, when's the, the class for Julie's class? Is it? Uh, she might have it this Tuesday, but she did every, this Tuesday, so, not next Tuesday, but the one after. Okay, in two weeks. Okay, thank you. Tuesday night, Tuesday at 6 or 7, Laura, 6.30, um, small sanctuary. It's in two weeks on a Tuesday. It's every other Tuesday. It's every, every two weeks on Tuesday. And they walk you through the miracle list. She can help you. She's right there. She's playing with someone. It's women. women. It's women. Yep. I've been, um, you know, I'm um, just overcoming. To be honest, I was on. He got diagnosed with PTSD in 2019. Okay. And I, like, almost lost my mind. I, I was kept in a psychiatric hospital, and I was on medication. And I couldn't even eat. It was really bad. And then I was on medication, and I got better. But then I was really one month free from the surgery. And once I stopped, it was like, I felt like I was going to die. Like, I felt suicidal. I felt depressed. I've been dealing with that for three months. Angry. Can you spell your name for me? C-I-A-R-A. Sierra, okay. Yes. So I can get lost. This is Sierra. This is my wife. Hi, Sierra. And she got a massive deliverance. And Rick, if, if you go on the website, it's just yeah. hardcore Christianity. Mike has a very good teaching on PTSD. 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 Oh, really? And it's pretty rough. Yeah. There's hope. Don't worry about any of that stuff. I was completely insane. I thought I'd get a nut check every time. I was crazy. Clown. I was for 35 years. And now I'm almost in my right mind. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of normal. It feels pretty neat. Thanks, Sarah. Okay. It really will. Yes. Hey, it's not going to happen in a church. Yes. It's going to happen here because the power of God moves here. Yes. I'm not saying don't go to church. Yes. But come here. Yes. Do that miracle, man. Yes. Come tomorrow night. Yes. And show me one yes. thing. Yes. So she's seen you do some of your stuff like or yeah. She knew when I was on the street with nothing I, almost I've on the heroin. I brought him down here. Because <laughs> I was like, this is the last straw. I was not going to put up with it anymore. And I just heard about you, so I just told my friend. So I brought him down. He had some liver, but he got high before we left. Yeah. So he was in no shape for deliverance. Wow. And nobody was here because he made us late. He was totally like all over the place. I'm going to talk to you. Hey, YouTubers, listen, uh, YouTubers, we bind off here. We bind off. I command healing in everybody on the YouTube platform, all the YouTubers, that their bodies would be healed by the power of the risen Son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ. I command miracles of healing over the hurting backs, over the back that's hurting, in the name of Jesus, we command that every strand of DNA would be healed tonight, that you would be glorified, Father God. I'm praying for you, YouTubers. Put your hand on your aching body part. If you're still on there, put your hand on your knee, on your back. If it's your mind that you need healing for, put your hand on your mind. In the name of the risen Son of God, we come against all confusion in the mind. We break its power. Cast, come out. Tell it to go. Confusion, come out of the minds. Confusion, come out of the minds. Fear, fear, go in Jesus' name. Come out, come out fear. YouTubers, take a hold of your faith. Cast it out. We're praying for the YouTubers, Donald. Pray for them. We command you to come out. All bodies be healed. Backs be healed. Knees be healed. Every strand of DNA in the end time body of Christ Jesus. Be healed. Receive your healing tonight. He's already paid for it. It's yours for the taking. In Jesus' name. Thank you, YouTubers. Thank you for your support. We love you. Holy Spirit's moving here. He's moving where you're at too. Thank you for all the testimonies. And um, we just pray Psalms 91 over, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. We will say of the Lord, He is our refuge and our fortress, our God in whom we trust. Surely He will save us from the snare of the fowler. Back be healed in Jesus' name.
He will cover us with his feathers and under his wings we shall take refuge. His faithfulness is our shield and buckler. We will not fear the terror of night. We will not fear the arrow that flies by day, nor the perilous pestilence that stalks into darkness, nor the plague that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at our side, 10,000 at our right hand, but it shall not come near us. Only with our eyes will we see the destruction of the wicked. If we make, here's the key line, if we make the most high our dwelling, even the Lord who is our refuge, then no harm shall befall us. No disaster shall come near your tent, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They'll lift you up. Hallelujah. Woo. They'll lift you up lest you strike your foot against the stone. You, YouTubers, people in this church, shall tread upon serpents. You shall tread upon lions and cobras. Yea, the great lion and serpent, you shall trample underfoot. Because he loves me, says the Lord, he will call upon me, and I will answer him. Because he hath known my name, I will rescue him. I will deliver him. It will honor him, and with long life, you shall satisfy him and show us your salvation. I pray that over the YouTubers. I pray that over these ministers and minist people ministering here in Jesus' name. Hey, Mike Smith teaching tomorrow night. Don't forget the YouTube, um, I mean the Zoom deliverance call on Wednesday with bro Rick and myself and uh, my wife. And uh, I'm drawing a blank. What's her name? Uh, we got to go pray healing for these people real quick. Um, Lord, we thank you. And don't forget the Tuesday night thunder. Hey, Julie, Julie, she wants to check out your class. Sierra's her name, Sierra. Okay, God bless you guys. Good night. Wait, don't leave. Don't leave. Hey. You would be glorified, Father. You would be glorified, Holy God. You would be glorified, Lord. And many would say, wow, how did this happen? It was Jesus Christ. So we God in this. We come against that person. We ask for a great miracle and that me and me would grow back into a perfect formation. All we see is that you did it, Lord. Especially the doctors. And that many would come to be in this miracle.
body is going to get your ulcer, you feel soft spot, the Lord gets healed. So heal right now as we take hold of it. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, that, that she may be out of this wheelchair and the heal her body and her mind, Lord God, and she'll be leaping for joy, but she knows that she's healed for the glory of your name's sake. And we thank you right now as the healing power is flowing through her body and through her knee right now. And we bind and cast out that devil that they would never come back. And we cast it out in the name of Jesus Christ, the risen King. Come out, heal her right now in the name of Christ. Call you out. Heal her body and her mind. We thank you, Father. We will not fear, we will trust God. Yeah, Jamal walks you guys out. Yeah, I need some music. Okay, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Hey, it's good seeing you guys again. I've been trying to catch you guys, but. All right, YouTubers, have a great night. God bless you all. Um, Jesus reached out, touched him, and said, I am willing. He said, be healed. Jesus reached out and touched him. I am willing, he said, be healed. Matthew 8.8, 8. be healed tonight. Be healed tonight. He wants you healed. Don't let fear rob you. Don't let doubt rob you. Don't let unbelief rob you. Jesus reached out and touched him. I am willing, he said, be healed. And Lord, right now, we pray for our friend Arnie. Pray with me, brother. We pray for our brother Arnie. YouTubers, one of our own has fallen. We pray for him right now. Arnie, we command a miracle of healing in his body, Lord. In the name of Jesus, that you would be glorified, Lord. And we thank you for raising him back up, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. We trust you. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, guys. God bless. Good night.